In this video, we're continuing on a series of videos that we've been looking at the two plate method, sometimes called taking the feed to the switch. One of my students contacted me and said, Gary, I've just taken a switch off the wall that had the neutral connections actually connected in the back of the switch. I said, well, that's interesting. I think we can explore that and we will do in this video. So let's look at the rig that we've currently got. We've got a cable coming from the consumer unit, this taking the feed to the switch, which brings our line, our neutral and our CPC down to our first switch, of which the neutral isn't required there. And we had to put it into a connector, in this case, a Wago 221, because the neutral was required to be re-diverted up to our lighting points. And we've seen that in a series of videos, including some on the wiring diagrams as well. But this switch here can help us remove that connector by having an additional terminal in it. So we're going to take it over to the bench, we'll have a look at this switch and then we'll come back and make the connections and see if it's a better switch or a better solution maybe than having a connector floating around in the back of the switch. So let's explore the terminals on the back of this Schneider switch a little bit closer. So here we have a two-way switch. We've got common, one-way and two-way. We're possibly used to being common L1 and L2 in drawings and other videos that were done on the channel. And now another terminal called loop, I'm not sure that's the right name for it, but this is the terminal where we'll be making our connections for our neutral. Let's explore the fact and see if this loop terminal is physically connected to any other terminals. We wouldn't expect it to be, would we? If we're putting a neutral in here, permanent line and our switching lines in these, we wouldn't expect them to be electrically connected together. So if I bring in my continuity tester, and we test first of all between common, let's go L2, okay, that has a continuity. If we operate the switch, we expect that not to have anything, so, okay, so that's now not got a continuity. So let's go to the L1. Again, that's got a continuity. If I operate the switch, we expect it not to. So that's working correctly in those terminals which we would expect on the back of a two-way switch. But let's go now between common and loop, and now loop and one-way, loop and two-way, operate the switch again, and repeat the process. None of these are connected together. That makes perfect sense, doesn't it? So this terminal down here labeled loop is not physically connected to any of the elements of the switching mechanism. So effectively it's standing alone. So it's no different than the Wago 2 to 1 connector we've currently got in the back of our switch. So this could facilitate for us the neutrals. Let's go and connect this switch up next. So I'm going to replace this two-way switch with this one from Schneider that has the neutral connection in it. But when you're changing stuff, especially on site when you're learning, it's always worth just taking a photograph. So once you've disconnected stuff, you've got an idea of where the conductors are going. Let's just familiarize ourselves once again with what we've got in here. We've got the cable coming in this side here, bringing in our line into either L1 or L2, our neutral into a connector block and our CPC. And then we've got our three core that goes across to our intermediate switch. So our three core being brown, black, and gray. And we've got those coming out of gray coming out of either L1 or L2. We've got our brown coming out of either L1 or L2 and our black in common. And then the other cable going up and out here is the one that takes out um, our switching line, which is coming along with the gray, our blue neutral and our CPC. So again, if that's unfamiliar to you, I've done a video explaining all of these connections. So I recommend you go back and have a look at that. So let's disconnect this two-way switch so we can put the new one on. So you can see from a training point of view, the minute you've popped all of those out, you're thinking, oh, where does everything go? So we can get rid of the connector now as well because we're gonna connect those into the loop terminal in the back here that we just looked at. So we've got the loop one there for our neutral. So common, so we've got a common connection, which is our black. We've got, it's labeled one way and two way, which is our L1 and L2. So we've got a set there and a set there going to go in those two there. As always, I really like to double over my termination. So I've come out of the way, go two, two, one, and we know we don't double over into them as lever style connectors. So I'm just going to strip a little bit more back off. and I'm going to double over my terminations. You notice now, no knife. Okay, using a set of wire strippers. I do recommend if you can get hold of a decent set of wire strippers, that'd be brilliant. I'm going to fold these over so I can make my neutral connection, the one that we said was labelled loop. So I've doubled those over. I'll just pop all my connections back into my switch. So let's pop our neutrals into this loop terminal, which is new to me. 
Uh, lots of switches out there have them. People keep saying Hager have been doing this forever. So again, if you've been using that style of switch, just let us know. So pop those into there. And then we've got a choice now of where we go. So we automatically know our common for me and my system is always black. So I'll get rid of that one next. And my black common can go in. And then we've got to work out where we're doing next between one way and two way L1 and L2. So we've got a permanent line here and a switching line here. So a permanent line and switching line. I always like my permanent line to go with the brown of the three core. So those two there will go into this terminal just here, which it doesn't matter which one of the two it went into. Pop those in. And then I've got my switching line going in with my gray of my three core. Like that, a little bit different. Just those labels are a little bit different than we used to see and we have seen L1 and L2. So there we have it. So if you come across a switch like this, it could be a Schneider one, it could be a Hager one, where you've got the two neutrals for this system now not connected together in a way go, but actually inside the switch itself. We know that that neutral connection is not connected to any of the switching circuit. And we've got L1, L2 terminals and our common. So our connections have been made into this switch now, replacing the original two-way switch. I'm sure the keen eyed amongst you would also say, now, hang on, Gaz, there's an extra connection also in the intermediate switch. So let's have another look here as we pull it round. We've only got the brown and gray cables being passed through the intermediate switch. And for my system, I always use black, the one that's going to be connected together. It just passes through here to get to the next two way switch. So if I had an intermediate switch from the Schneider range, hopefully I could get rid of this connector by making those connections in the back of the switch. So I bought an intermediate switch. So here's my intermediate switch. And as I turn it over, only the four connections that I do require for my intermediate switch are there. There is no additional terminal where I could put these two here. So that was a bit of a letdown that was when I bought that. I was expecting to have an extra terminal here. If you look at these two, it looks remarkably like we're using the same frame. So if the intermediate switch to be this switch and obviously making that loop terminal. But when we get to the intermediate switch, they haven't had an additional section anywhere that I can put these connections that I have to stay now in my Wago 221. So that was a little bit disappointing. If you've been using the Hager one and the Hager intermediate switch has an extra connection, please leave that comment below and I'll perhaps buy and investigate that. But um, yeah, that was a bit of a drawback, yeah? The Schneider switch for the intermediate had no additional terminal. What a shame. So a couple of bits there for us to just digest, isn't there? So we can get switches now that can facilitate this neutral terminal when we're doing taking the feed to the switch, sometimes called the two plate method. And just be aware of that in the industry. If you take one off, don't start panicking. That neutral connection, as we proved, is not connected to any part of the switching line circuit. You also saw in the video me use a pair of uh, cable strippers or twin and earth strippers. I've even said twin and earth as well for our cables. And again, it might be worth investing in a decent set of wire strippers for, for one mil, one five and 2.5 twin and earth or twin and CPC cables. So hopefully you've left me some comments below about this neutral terminal being added to the back of the switch, including the ones that maybe Hager make. We looked at the Schneider one today. But as always, I hope this video has been some help.